Hello, all you hardcores out there. How are you doing? It's Russ here from Porker's Corner, the biggest gob in sport. We say the things on here and nobody dares say. Isn't that right, Coogs? Let me just get me uh, tracky on while Chris logs on. Uh, Or should I say my jumper, sweater, whatever? I mean, where's the bee sample? Where's the bee sample? Pop, pop, bang. Chris should be with us in any second now. We'll get going, first of all. I just want to mention that November 1st, talk 30th, we're doing a, we're doing a uh, Zoom off. If any newbies want to come on, bottom left-hand corner, you'll see me email, get in touch. We'll get you on a Zoom, and uh, whoever gets most views in November, oh, you get 100 quid. Oh, hey there. Go on, hey. Like you got Liam up there with Beta Beef. <laughs> yeah, twins. Hey, God. I've got his uh, old trainer downstairs doing floor tiling. He's just sent his best regards to you, Terry. Matt, Matt man's a living legend, man. Best trainer in Sheffield, not even close. Well, let's hope that uh, Liam does well Saturday. He's up against it, isn't he? Ben Whitaker. Um, it's a... Listen. It's a hard fight for Liam. I think it's probably Liam's hardest test. Yeah. Um, yeah, even harder than Lyndon Arthur. But also, it's Ben's hardest test as well. Yeah. Because yeah. I think Liam's the first guy he's jumping in with who actually knows how to box. Remember, Liam was Ben Whitaker before Ben Whitaker. Yeah, well, yeah, he could have gone to the Olympics, Liam. He went pro. Yeah, badly advised. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. But Chris had him from nine year old. You know. Exactly. Isn't it mad how boxing works, right? Smedley did 95% of the work. None of the reward. None of the reward whatsoever. No, he's doing all right. He's got BMW on driving, a nice car, and he's he's booked up with tiling and stuff like that. So he's happy. Look, he's, he's got his gym up Sheffield. Look, Chris is happy go looking. He doesn't drink, smoke, he doesn't party pop. He just likes a laugh, doesn't he? Is it like he's one of the chaps, isn't he? Yeah, smart man. He understands the game, Porky. He he has a skill that will always be in demand, and you can't really do it with a machine. And as long as he can find people who want to pay him to do that, he'll always be laughing. Yeah, he's got uh, his gym's thriving at the moment, absolutely thriving with prospects and. Uh... He's pleased. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Killer Khan was there not long ago, wasn't he? Yeah, that's his pal, isn't it? Killer Khan, him and Killer. Good mate. See, all of our Killer's all of our pals, man. Like Sheffield legend. Hey, listen, mate. What sort of pals are going to get up at five in the morning and a two and a half hour drive down here? Right, and be here, at, be here at 20 past seven. Do you know what I mean? Ready to graft for five days what what, what, what he's doing. That's not bad, is it, that? No, it's the top man, top man, top trainer. I wonder to cut all these down here and quoted it. So, yeah, he's uh, he's doing all right. It's just it'll be uh, a bit different for him, I think, this this weekend watching boxing because he, he he'll watch it and he can say, "Oh, he'll wishing it, Liam, all the best," which is what he just said to me earlier. I wish him all the best, but. I can't, he hadn't said this to me, but I can't help think that Chris would probably think, you know what, he, I should have been with him on that night. Do you know what I mean? But Liam's assigned himself, aligned himself with a trainer. And Chris's old gym, actually, a, Chris, a gym Chris built up. How crazy is that? He's aligned himself with a trainer who's got a good kid in Dalton Smith and he's got Sonny Edwards and he's got Eddie's ear. That's what's gone on in it, basically. Liam's been smart, hasn't he? You know? <laughs> Yeah, but Russ, it's like anyone, right? If someone says to me, I can play football, I've got an option between going down to play for Dulwich Hamlet or I can go up to, to the new camp and go and train with, I mean, with, with Barcelona. You know where I'm going, right? 
Yeah, where? Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Because you, you're just, you're always going to be better being around better people. You, you, yeah. It's just how it goes. I know. I know. It's uh, just the nature of the beast, isn't it, in boxing, isn't it? Uh, okay, then. Before we talk about uh, what's been going on recently, can we back up to Anthony Yard's situation? Can we talk about that, uh, Terry? Um, yeah. Um... Is the legal situation now dead? People are saying that it's going to be nipped in bud now. He's working with Boxer and Boxer working with Turkey and all that kind of thing. I, I assume that what will happen is a proportion of Yard's purses will go to Frank. And that's how that's been resolved. Yeah, yeah, that's that. Uh, otherwise, I can't imagine Ben would even be on a plane to Saudi Arabia. Do you know what I mean? So, I think what's happened is Frank's gone. It's going to cost me this much money to sue. Yard's gone. It's going to take this many years to go through the court process. And Ben Shalom's hopefully been the smart man who's gone. Look, Frank, how much is it going to cost for this to be resolved? And then he's probably said, look, we will take 10% off the top of what Yard makes um, and we'll make you right. Yard just wants to fight. He? He's too inactive, isn't he? You know, you got to feel for Yard, aren't you, really? He fought earlier this year. So he's not inactive. in. Like he's a, not on everybody's in... lips, though, is he, at the moment? No. Nah, but he never is. And, and, and unless he fights... You know, someone we recognize, we don't tend to really watch him, do we? No, you think that Yard's uh, in a predicament because he took bad advice or was in a predicament? Well, it seems to have worked out, right? It does now, doesn't not, it? Yeah, not how I would have gone about it, but it's kind of shaking itself up for the, for the best. And because, look, ultimately, this is about making money. And there's money in Yard versus Boetsy right now. That's a hot fight. You know what I mean? And there could be money in actually splitting those two mm. and sending Boetsy to Baturbiev and Yard to Bivol. Do you see what I mean? Like, yeah. y- Yard Yard makes the division more exciting. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? What about Yard against Willie Hutchinson? Um, uh, after what we saw with Boatsy, probably not. I think Yard hits a lot harder than Willie does. Yeah. You think Willie were fit on that night? God, yeah. Well, to get up the way he did and carry on fighting, he was, yeah, he was fit. Well, it looked like he was blowing out in his ass after four rounds to me, Terry. Nah, if he was, I don't think he gets up. Like, your ability to get up and recover from those sorts of knockdowns is a function of your fitness. Okay. Right. And he, he he wouldn't... Th- think about the pace Boatsy set, definitely in the first seven, eight rounds. You've got to be fit. Like, he, they, went in a, they went in a hell of a pace, mate. So, now, was he underpowered in that fight 100%? I don't think he was unfit, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, interesting. Uh, going back to the Ben Whittaker fight, you think Ben Whittaker's got enough pop in his punches to uh, keep Liam off? Yeah, yeah. He's got he's got that kind of stealth power. You know where it's not it's not going to drop you with one shot, but you'll see. If Liam doesn't move his head, you'll see Liam's face after the fight and you'll understand that Ben Whitaker hits pretty like hard. A Roy, like a Roy Jones type. Really quick. Not a McClellan Iceman, but really quick and, and, and damaging kind of punches, yeah? Nah, not even quick. He's Have you ever stood next to Ben Whitaker, Porky? He's a big lad. Like, he's got weight, he looks like a cruiserweight, doesn't he, when he's out, when he's yeah. out of camp? Yeah. And Liam, Liam's really a middleweight portraying a light heavyweight. Yeah, he's a middleweight. Hey, listen, he was 158 when he won Commonwealth, Liam. Weighed 158 yeah. pounds. Yeah. Ben Ben's a light heavyweight. And so those punches are going to be serious punches for Liam to take. I, I, I think he can take them, but it's going to come at a price. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, all right. So, who have you got on the night? Ben Whitaker on points? 
I, I, you know, it's weird because I don't want to call it because I know both guys pretty well. And like, it's one of those fights that I'm just going to watch and go, well, whoever wins, wins. I don't want Liam to lose, but I think Ben's going to win. And I think Ben will win handily. Just from what I'm hearing in sparring, he's, he's definitely put himself in the trenches for this fight. So I think this could be a real coming up party for Ben Whittaker. Yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting. Well, if he met, if he does a better job on Liam than Lyndon Arthur, they're going to scream for Lyndon Arthur fight, aren't they? Uh, I think I think those people scream for the Dan Aziz fight. If Dan can beat Louis Edmondson, I think that's probably the logical fight to do. Um, I think you're going to see Lyndon against someone like Spider. You know, two guys who've got a point to prove now to get themselves back in the mix. In the mix, because look at where Ben is. Ben's kind of shooting for that kind of British level. Yeah, yeah. Whereas he's, I think he's Craig chasing Lindley. gatekeepers now, isn't he, Ben? If he beats Liam Cameron. Yeah, and whereas yeah. I think Craig and Lyndon are still after one last crack at the top. Do you think that uh, Dan Aziz, if he gets a win over Dan Aziz, those you know archetypal? Type. You know, the, the, you'd say you were like a Clinton Woods, British Commonwealth European type. Obviously, Clinton went on to win world title and hold his own, and he held it for over three years. But Dan hadn't done that. But up until then, do you think it, Dan is easier like a Clinton Woods type guy? You know, that good, solid, does everything right, and that tough, durable, and all that? Done it the hard know, way, done it the hard way, Terry. That's the word. That's the expression I'd use. He did it the hard way. He's won every yeah. belt, right? Apart from the world title, he's won every belt. So he's done yeah. Southern Area. He's done English. Yeah. Southern Area, Charlie Duffield, good fight. English, Andre Sterling, good fight. Mm-hmm. British, Hosea Burton, a uh, good name, we'll say. Uh, who did he fight for the Commonwealth? I forget that. He but, did well, but, though. Yeah, Commonwealth, European against the French guy, four. He, he's he's done well for someone that they didn't expect to do anything. Wasn't he with uh, Steve Goodwin at one point? No. Oh, never, oh, never uh, Goodwin. Did he fight no. on a Steve Goodwin show? No. Never. No. I, I must be getting him mixed up with somebody else down there. I know Martin always used to big him up, didn't he? Your pal from Milton Keynes. Uh, yeah. He used to big Dan yeah. Aziz up and that, and to be fair, when they were coming through, Dan Aziz, didn't he have a fight with one of Dean White's lot? Which one? I'm sure he had a fight with one of them lot for a minor belt. Uh, I forget the kid's name now. And he won it anyway. And uh, I remember that was one of the first times I actually I'd heard of him. Like, and I thought, oh, he seems to be doing it the traditional way. And I kind of like that, you know? That traditional yeah. road, and uh, obviously yeah. he, he's had, he's had a lot. He, he, he ain't got to world title. He ain't won one yet, but I, 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 well, well Aziz, yeah. funny, you know, when you think about it. I just think this is that Dan is one of the victims of he's old bullshit. Also, I can't, yeah, just because I can't, I can't, I can't swear on your channel. You don't get any money. Um, the BS that's all around undisputed. Yeah. There should have been four belts in circulation. And when Dan won that European, he should have been allowed to fight for a world title. It's as simple as that. But because all these fans want to wait for Undisputed and all these sorts of things that don't mean anything, that Dan and all these other kids have had to just sit there and wait and wait and watch their talent get old while we sit and wait for a fight that, to be honest, I don't even care about. And when this fight happens, they'll split them up anyway, won't they? That's why everybody's getting into position for interims. Yeah, you know. So, so yeah. So we, this fight didn't need the belts. Who's the guy with the WBC? Is it Benavides? Is he the uh, Benavides? Is he the interim? Then we've got. I might be wrong on that. And then we've got Boatsy with WBO. Is that is that correct? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I don't know who the IBF interims are, but mate, this is a mess. All of these undisputed fights have just ruined boxing. Yeah, I agree, man. Let me just have a little look. David Benavides. Yeah, the, this is this is the problem problem we've got, and all, all the belts are parked up, aren't they? 
Yeah. Right. All the heavyweight titles are parked up. How long have they been parked up with the same two people? Hey. Eh? How long have the how long have the heavyweight belts been parked up with the same two people? Two years, right? Ages, ages. Right, David Benavitas. I'm just looking at Yard earlier. He's ranked number ten, isn't he? Uh, David Benavitas is the WBC interim champion at light heavyweight. He beat Gavazdai. and Boatsi beat Willie Hutchinson in the last fight. He's WBO. So they're all ready for them belts to be scattered. But if they'd have been scattered when they should have been, we'd have had Dan Aziz fighting for, for one, wouldn't we? Or possibly a world champion. Yeah. It's just how it goes, isn't it? You know? Boxing's so cruel. Because Dan deserves a world title shot. He does. He does, yeah. He does. I think that would be a good story for British boxing. And it'll be a reminder that the best way to do it is the traditional way. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, mate. I agree with you. Absolutely. I was saying to Richard earlier uh, that uh, it's a good show this, though, this weekend, isn't it? It's a good card. Yeah. So we've spoke about the light heavyweights. I'm going for Beta Beef on points. Who are you going for, Terry? Um, I think Beta Beef will stop him. Yeah. Yeah. I think the thing people aren't talking about is we've never seen Bivol look good going backwards. And Baturbiev will push him backwards. Well, he doesn't do no any. He doesn't do nothing else, does he? If you try and push him backwards, it just makes fire with fire, doesn't he? Yeah, and he can do something that none of Bivol's opponents have wanted to do. He can punch between the punches. What do you think to their training regimes out there? You know where he's from. That better be because I watched that YouTube clip of him training and that and. Why do they like to train in cold weather and stuff? How can that be good for your bones, Terry? It's where they come from. So I imagine it's just comfortable for them, right? Yeah, but all that press ups on 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 the on the on the knuckles and on the hard road. On the hard road and like I'm watching that Usyk one where he just jumps in fish pond, doesn't he? Jumps in. Well, yeah, he, he just slinks in, goes down really slowly. Whereas whenever we get any Brits going in any cold water like that, they're squealing like pigs. He just slipped down really quietly and was staying underwater ages, then popping up and in his boxers. And they'd been like the Kobolev. And they grew up together, didn't they, Kobolev and Better Beef? They'd be running in woods in snow, bare feet and that, five mile. Well, I, I don't think that's good. If I were a dad and my kids were running like that, you'd think... In that bit extreme, what, what I don't know. What do you think? I I used to run barefoot when I was a kid. It's, yeah, but where you come from, Zimbabwe, it's red hot there, isn't it? It's not snowing, is it? Well, mate, you you, you ever you ever run on tarmac barefoot when it's thirty five degrees? Oh, does it make you run faster? <laughs> Yo, I can't do it. Now. Terry, is back. that straight up? You used to run on yeah. tarmac barefoot. Yeah. We used to play rugby barefoot. In primary school, you played rugby barefoot. Yeah. Everyone played barefoot. Yeah. You, you, so you, you, yeah, you weren't allowed boots until probably, yeah, second year of secondary school. Do you think we're molly cuddled in Britain then? We are kids. Yeah, of course. And this country's soft. Everyone in this country is soft. Like everyone in this country is soft. You know, where they, you know, where you hear people talking about they're a hard man. I'm from here. I'm from there. Everyone here is soft because everything's protected. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you walk down your high street, um, you know you're all right because there's CCTV everywhere. You go to work, you know you're all right because there's human resources everywhere. You start going into some of these other countries, mate, you won't be able to handle yourself. Yeah. Like, like, like no exceptions. You have to be able to handle yourself. Last week, I up off my two kids were sat at dinner table, arms folded. So what's the matter? We don't eat veg. So, well, there's no else. We want a McDonald's. So there's no McDonald's. I'm here today. And they were sat there, mash, meat, veg, arms folded. You know, if I had been a kid and done that at my dinner table, my head would have gone straight in dinner. Straight in it. Yeah. Not messing about. Do you know what I mean? I'd have got back backhand. To eat it, eh? I'd have got backhand for even talking back. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And like, I sat there like that. I thought, what's, what's the matter? 
arms folded like that. I thought, what's this? <laughs> Is it a standoff or something? It reminded me of a strike since the 70s, one out, all out. So what's going on here? You like, you know, this <laughs> <laughs> what, they, what, are they ganged up on you? Yeah, they sat there with arms folded. We don't want that. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable, mate. And then, and then they want to go lay on the beds like slugs on their iPads. And I'm like, no, oh, taking dogs out. Oh, we don't want to want to stay in on iPads. So I, I'm at that stage in my life, Teddy, where I'm like, is it just me or has everybody else got the same problem when I speak to people and they've all got the same issues as me? Yeah, but but here's the thing. We we vote for these things, right? We all we complain that this country's too soft, but we're all complaining from the same apps and the same phones, right? We are the problem. I'll give you an example. Look at TikTok. Right, TikTok's essentially a platform that got blown up by by young kids, right? Just young yeah. kids having fun, and that's how they went viral. You've got middle aged men and women trying to copy little little kids' dances to go viral. So how can we how can we have respect in this country when adults don't behave like adults? The kids are looking at because I would if I was a kid and I saw. One of the, one of my elders behaving like I would on the app. Like, I can't respect you because you're not showing me enough of a gap that I can respect you as an elder. Yeah, yeah, I see where you're coming from, mate. Just an example, example, Russ. Right, I bet any money. Yeah, in this comment section, you're going to get grown men with grey in their beard, grey in their hair, erectile dysfunction, slagging me off for no reason. I bet you will. Right? Oh yeah. Oh well. Cameron removes the all comments from when the slag guests off now because it's not. It's not nice for them, is it? To see. I say leave yeah. them on for me. Leave mine on, but he removes them all now. So yeah. And and and, and can, name me one of those guys that would do that to my face. None. They shit the pants. That's the problem with this country. We we've allowed the cowards to have a voice when they didn't used to. You, Russ, you know this, right? When you were growing up, let's say. You, 21-year-old Russell Hartley was out on a night out. You couldn't say anything stupid around a group of men because, you know I mean, you'd get put in your place. You'd be made to deal with up. it. You, you won't be able to yeah. say it because they say, well, he's on his way down in a minute. If you've got beef with him, we're going to ref it. You're going to have to get at it. Yeah. That's, that's how it worked. They've been on that. Uh, it's only banter. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and where I'm from, like, people talk about having a battle. Nowadays, it's next generation. They just talk about it, whereas normally they just steam straight into you, you know, in past. And now they, old it's all like, let's, let's, have a, let's have a walk or we'll arrange a date. And what is all that? Just get stuck in on spot. On get site. Off That's and it. get stuck in. No mind all that, let's meet up another night. What, the, what is all that? <laughs> yeah. On site. I mean, I mean, get the leather jacket on, get the tracksuit on, get the cap on, and yeah. get at it. Well, that's, what, that's <laughs> where we're from, aren't we? What, well, like me in Nottingham? <laughs> <laughs> we're only trying to shit him up, aren't we? I tried to do him a square, and he just took liberties, didn't he? But uh, yeah, brilliant. Driven over an hour to get here. <laughs> yeah, me and Max. Max, they're saying I'm in training. He stopped twice for against us. Do you know what I mean? Unbelievable. Oh, in, Get in your set round corner. Hey, I love that one. Get your set round corner. <laughs> Send round here in Cat Alley, kid. Pop, pop, bang. Uh, okay, so we spoke about the light heavyweight star fight on the night. Look, it's a wet, it's an hardcore's wet dream, that in it. We don't need all the belts on the line. Get them scattered. Get these kids have a bit of kudos. They're the main two big dogs. Let them get at it, and then after that, we've got. Which would you say is next best fight on that show? It's Big Freeze and Wardley. You always will give the heavyweights that kind of respect, haven't you? And we, we know what happened in the first fight. I don't think the second one will go the same way. I don't, don't know. because No, I think Fraser's realised he doesn't have that kind of mileage to sustain those sorts of wars. Do you know what I mean? Like they're the sort of wars you want to save for a world title. So Oof. I expect Fraser oh. to, to stick behind his skills a bit more. Yeah, and and try not to war, but I think I think Ward will just get to him again. Like Fabio's got that way of just being able to just club you, and you go, "Oh my god, that's scary." Do you feel that for quite a while now that the septics or 
what's the word? Maybe I might have that right. The sceptics and critics have been like, Wardley's going to get found out any day. And he's just kept going and going, hasn't he? You know, like Josh Warrington did, where they all kept saying, oh, Josh Warrington's performing out in his skin and overachieving and Ricky Burns. But they just kept going on that run and gaining more confidence. And do you think Wardley's that type of guy? When you're big game and you can dig a bit, you're always going to be a problem for someone. It's the same with Johnny Fisher. Like the way you beat guys like that is you've either got to overpower them, which is hard, or you've got to outskill them. And there's not a lot of heavyweights that are highly skilled. That's why Usyk's been able to clean up. I was talking to someone in the gym last night and I said, Can you imagine Usyk having this kind of run against guys like Chris Bird and Lehman Brewster? I'm like, I can't see it. Yeah. Not, not that he wouldn't win, I'm not saying that, but he wouldn't be that far ahead of them, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, They'd know how to deal with him. Mm. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. Uh, who have you got? Fabio, then. Yeah, I have. I just think Fraser's immobile. I think it, it looks to me like he's carrying a long-term back injury because he never really rotates into his punches. So he's either got back or hip problems. like, And I think that makes him immobile. Wardley's still mobile enough. I can see Mo. I can see Wardy dropping him, maybe twice this time, and then yeah, winning comfortably. Well, I like it, Big Freeze. Now I know I gave him a bit of stick with his nickname and that would have given him, but I give everybody a nickname. But I like him, and he's only up road here, Burton. So I want him to win, and I don't. I think it's a bad indictment on boxing if Wardley can come from a white collar. We know I'm a tobacco background, breeze in and get. Is it a British and Commonwealth? And then beat an Olympic medalist from his era. Uh, I think boxing's got a problem if he beats its big freeze on Saturday, don't you? Nah. No. Nah. Nah. Because there, there are there are other lads that will get at Audley. Like yeah. the new guys coming through that will get at him. Like really set about him. I don't think Fraser Clark's a guy, he hasn't got that mentality to set about people. Yeah. yeah, but there'll be some lads that come in about 17 and a half stone, like a Johnny Fisher that was set about Wardley, and yeah, that's a completely different fight. Yeah, well, I don't think Johnny Fisher does all mate, really. Do you, um, he'll get to a certain level because what he is is heavy handed, right? And if he lands a couple of those on you, I mean, he'll knock you into next week, or as Porky would say, he might put you on button moon, yeah, put but him on button moon. But you know the question that we should always ask is when will his skills start to break down? At what level? Will it be British level? Will it be common like European level where his skills start to break down because the guy in front of him is a little bit too good? That's the bit we can't really figure out yet because he hasn't been tested properly. But we want to see that. Where where maybe put him in with someone like a David Adelaide. And then let's see against one of his kind of like rivals. Let's see where he's really at. And can he do all of that stuff he's done before against a kid like David Adderley. David Adderley's gone a bit quiet lately, and I'm surprised. Are you? Well, he took your advice, Porky. What was that? Go to Adam Booth. Has he gone to Adam Booth? Yeah, him and Isaac Chamberlain with Adam Booth. Go to Adam Booth. The Dark Lord, he's the best. Adam Booth's back on a comeback. See, I didn't. I, I knew not to interrupt you when you were doing that. I don't. I know, like Max did. <laughs> Go to Adam Booth. You know, you know what it were. Why everybody used to say that, and Ultratech started it off. That's Ultratech, by the way's uh, impression that I do better than him. No point. I want to make is years ago. If anybody were leaving anybody, social media just went into like meltdown, and they said, "Oh, he's going to Adam Booth. Adam Booth." Right? Adam Booth's name were on everybody's lips, wasn't he, at one point? You remember? Yeah. Don't know why, though. Wasn't it crazy? How, and, and he were doing interview after interview, and Adam talks a good game, doesn't he? And I think he's a good trainer. You give him a bit of stick, don't you, Terry? Okay, what makes him a good trainer? Well, he did well for David Hay, didn't he? I'd argue David Hay underachieved. Do you think David Hay underachieved? Yeah, yeah. He, he took someone that was special and made him good. Do you think? Yeah. 
I, I think David. I think David could have been undisputed at cruiserweight, and I think he could have been unified at heavyweight. Well, they were unified at cruiserweight, weren't he? Yeah, he should have had all four belts. Who oh, did he swerve? He... O'Neill Bell. He swerved him, didn't he? Mm -hmm. well, that's what they say, but he could have. He'd have, he'd have blatted him as well. Yeah, yeah, but he didn't fight O'Neill Bell. I, I'm just gonna say this: for the power he's got in his right hand. Yeah. If he was around now, if we had a 27 year old David Hay right now. That all of these British contenders, this golden age of British heavyweights, we'd be laughing at them. He'd have splattered every one of them. Yeah, Fraser, Wardley, Johnny Fisher, Dave Allen, all the lot of them. You name it, he'd have gone. No, Fury, Joshua, White, yeah. Chisora. He has splattered every one of them. Look at what he did to Derek. Oh, and yeah. Look at what Derek's still doing now. Yeah. And that were a David A past his sell by date, wasn't it? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? What would David have done if Adam hadn't had him doing stupid box jumps with weights on his shoulders, just ruining his back? What would what would have happened if like let's say David had trained with someone like what's what's what was Lennox's trainer? Is it Pepe Correa, whatever his name Pepe is? Pepe Correa. And then he had him yeah. with Stewart, didn't he? Yeah, what would David have done with a guy like that? Do you know what I mean? What would he have done with someone who really knew the game and wasn't allegedly taking notes when Ishmael Salas was training David Hay? Yeah. That's why I call him the hoax. Because when I heard the story, and I can only say it's a story, I can't verify it, that when David used to train in Miami, it was Ishmael Salas that did all the sessions and Adam had to take notes. So he, he knew what to do when they went back to England. Yeah. Yeah. How can you be a great trainer when you're copying someone else? Yeah. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. I see where you're coming from. Uh, on trainers, while we're on it, James Cook, is he training yard now full-time or is Tundi still involved? That's a good question. Um, I'd imagine Tunde's still involved. Yeah. Yeah. They're, 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 you're looking at a 14-year relationship. Yeah. If you... Why would you change that at this point in your career? Yeah, they got so far, aren't they? Just because they well, if that legal blip's gone away, they've all might have wiped the beaks and moved on with a bit of luck, eh? Because I don't like to see it, it get to that stage. You know, like Ricky Burns when he had that beef uh we bricked up, he ended up bankrupt and Eddie hung him out to dry, didn't he? You know. Yeah. I don't like to see fighters lose all the lolly. Do you know what I mean? Uh nah. but uh okay. Uh Eubank, who's he fighting on this show, Chris? Uh, Chris Eubank, who's he fighting, Terry, on this show? Some guy whose name we can't pronounce. It's just another, yet another tick over. It's like, you know, that film, 48 Hours, then another 48 Hours, then yet another 48 Hours. It's like that, isn't it? It's like the Essex Boy films, they just keep churning them out, churning them out. And there's that much confusion about how them lads would die that I don't even think Court of Appeal know now. <laughs> you know what I mean? And maybe they've confused them. I don't know, mate. But uh, what do you think? Uh, so here's the thing with Eubank. He's at that point in his career where there's only a handful of people who want to see him fight. So if you're being honest, you wouldn't mind a, you wouldn't mind a Wembley showdown with Canelo. I don't care what anyone says. If you're a boxing fan, that makes sense, right? So yeah, let's watch that. That's an event. Yeah. Um, but who else is on that list? I don't want to see him fight Conor Ben. I kind of don't care about that, and I don't really want to reward a drugs cheat. So I don't care about that fight. So that, that, that and that's kind of it. I, I, Hamza Shiraz doesn't do anything for me because it's Eubank, and I want to see him fight guys like Canelo. Yeah, Canelo, Charlo, if he can pull himself together, that that sort of caliber. Yeah, well, I want to see Charlo and Eubank. I don't want to see... I keep... You know what? People keep going on about Billy Joe Saunders coming back, right? He's been out of game three and a half year, right? And there's nothing lined up and he's not in shape. And when you've been out that long, you need two or three fights, don't you? And that's going to take at least a year. So that would be four and a half years if we were fighting next week. And then he'd be six months off a world title from there. 
So it'd be five, six fights in. And, and it just takes some time to get back into the rhythm. Look at Yui. We're two and a half year out. Do you know what I mean? Your timing's all out and blah de blah. Do you know I, what I mean? think Billy Joe just does it to yank people's chains. Yeah, when you come back and train. Well, he got that is it? He got is he uh, on hook, didn't he? And Bean, Super Bean. Oh wow. Do you know what I mean? They bought into it, and now when when they're asked the questions, they're a bit more selective in their answers because they know they've had the chains pulled. He ain't coming back. His problem's food. That's his problem, yeah. food and dedicate. Yeah. Once your desire's gone, it's done. You're in the wrong game, aren't you? In the hurt business, aren't we? Yeah, and there are people who'd come, there are people who'd really set about Billy Joe as well. Listen, if Billy Joe come back and on about coming back at 175, could you imagine Billy Joe going up against Better Beef? Or even Liam Cameron. Or Be Be Benny Vides. What would happen to little Billy if he went up against Benny Vides, a real ice man? Hey, from Billy Ricky, from Billy Ricky, like Eddie Hills. Hills, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I say it twice, I go in the blue corner from Billy Ricky, the six and a ice man, four on button moon, Eddie Hills, Hills, <laughs> <laughs> pop, pop, bang. But we have to respect Eddie's grift, and he's a businessman, and he? he does his best for his fighters. There's nobody can hype somebody up better than him. I mean, how they're selling this Joshua rematch with Jabbar is. They're selling it on the strength of that straight one-two we caught him with in round five, aren't they? Saying he's still got a puncher's chance and last thing to go is your power. Is that where we're at with Joshua now, Terry? Last thing to go is your power. Hey, is that I, where I, we're I, at? I, I will say this, right? In that final sequence... Both fighters had to make three decisions, yeah? Yeah. Joshua got two out of three correct. Dubois got three out of three correct. And that was the difference. Yeah. If you go back and watch those two right hands that Joshua throws at Dubois, they should have knocked him clean out. You know what Dubois did? And I, I didn't notice this until I went back and watched it. He just threw his left arm in the air. So when Joshua's throwing that punch over, the first thing he hits is his shoulder. Yeah. And that that took this. Had he not done that, had he tried to block it normally, that would have ended badly for him. And that's the gap between them. Daniel can box. Joshua has to learn how to box. Yeah. Tricks at them little tricks at trade that Daniel's picked up with uh, Daddy Don Charles. That, yeah. Uh, Joshua's not picked up because he's forever overthinking. I mean, if you want to throw the trainers that he's had around him now, Sims, McCracken, Joby Clayle, Angel Hernandez, Robert Garcia, Derek James, Ben Davidson. Is it all them at fault or is it Joshua? I've said this for a long time. Joshua wants to box like Carl Froch. Yeah. That's how he wants to box. He wants to box. If you watch how he shapes up, he shapes up a lot like Carl, except Carl used to tuck his chin in when he did it. Joshua doesn't, but he shapes up a lot like Carl used to. And I'm like, what? why? Are you that obsessed with Carl Frost? Is that why when Carl talks about you, you get so sensitive? Well, the styles are very, very similar. It's, it's mainly built on uh, fitness and expl an explosion, 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 you know what I mean? But uh, explosive moves and that, isn't it? But Carl's advantage is he can take a shot, can't he? And he's fit. He could take a shot. He's fit. He's fitter and... than Joshua because he used to put the hard yards in. Yeah. And also, people forget Carl Box is a schoolboy. Yeah, and he won a medal at World Championships with David A. They were the first ones to have a medal, weren't they? Yeah. Were they the first to ever medal? Mm. Carl, Carl got his medal the day before, didn't he? And then David got a silver, didn't he, the day after he lost to Solace, didn't he, I think? Yeah. But now, Carl, Carl boxed him when he was a schoolboy. Yeah, but and... he packed in at 19 and came back to it, didn't he, when he were 24? But you, yeah, but when did he start? 13, 14? So that's six years. Yeah, I think years. younger than that. I think younger than that. I think he went down when he was about 11, 10, 11. So he had an eight year run as an amateur. People forget this, right? They just assume Carl took up boxing late. And yet, Carl, Carl really knows boxing. And that gets forgotten when people try and copy his style or whatever, Carl understood boxing. 
you don't like listen, nobody likes getting clipped, but sometimes you just gotta bite down on your gum shield, aren't you? And you know, literally when they say that, that's what people do. They go, ah, they bite down on it and they try and drag out what they can. You know, when you get clipped, but when you're getting clipped and clipped and clipped, it takes a different kind of person, I think, to 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 go through some of them them fires that he went through. Look at that with Jermaine Taylor when they were peppering him. What Groves did to him for six full, six and a half full rounds. You punched him upside yeah. down. Slap the life. Part up. two. Yeah, broke his spirit. Yeah, let's do part two. Yeah, you got to get that in, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, just like Ward did. Oh, fucking. Ward ran for his life, tell you. He wouldn't sign for a rematch. Pop, pop, bang. 